Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the Archie Luxury channel and the Paul Pluto channel. Today guys, I want to broadcast a video that my good friend Clivers, that's right, Clivers from Clive Watch Wrangler, he made. And uh, this was a great video, which I really enjoyed. It was about a guy who wanted to know whether he should change, exchange some Rolex, Rolex watches for a Patek Philippe. Calatrava. Now, at first, I thought this was a joke video. I thought maybe someone was taking the piss out of the pontiff. But when I uh, actually started watching it, I realized this was actually a serious question. And uh, I got to hand it to Clivers. I thought he handled the question very well. And uh, credit due where credit's due. I uh, asked Clivers if I could rebroadcast this video on my channel so he's very kindly given me permission guys click on the little question mark in the corner i'm not sure which corner because uh when you press the button it's on the other side to me oh fuck it just it is the question mark and i'll put a link to cliver's channel go and take a look uh, i'll put a link in the description as well just in case you can't find that other one so Clivers was actually answering this question pretty damn well. And I gotta say, I think he nailed it. I think he did. I think the big problem is, is that most people out there, you shouldn't be trading. If you are dealing with dealers, you're usually dealing with snakes. They will give you wholesale for your watches and they'll sell you the new watch at retail. Never an intelligent way to go. So... I got to be honest with you, I uh, I would discourage the flipping of watches to, to upgrade, but sometimes it has to be done. I recently traded st three steel sports Rolexes for my Patek Philippe. And uh, I got to be honest with you guys, sometimes in life, you've just got to do it. You got to do it. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. Anyhow, I think Clive really answered this well. So with Clive's permission, I've rebroadcast this video. Don't forget to check his channel out and uh, put a few nasty comments down below. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends and put some nasty comments down below. I'm Archibald Chesterfield III. This is Clive's video. Tell me what you fuckers think of that and if you like this idea how i find a video and i rebroadcast it let me know because i'm up to doing a bit more of this sort of stuff thank you and the fuckers get traffic they get traffic i'm helping them out fuckers hey i'm the ratcher and this is the clive watch wrangler channel apparently there was a tornado here in my little corner of the flyover states because i actually got a Email from Ralph Shepard saying, you okay? I heard from my relatives in Tulsa. Of course, just waking up, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? It's rainy night and it's still coming down in buckets, but, you know, still up. Still have internet and power and basic civilization. The reason why I'm on this morning is that I got an email here at the channel at clivewatchwrangler at gmail.com. Wrangler has a W and an L, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Hi, Clyde. And Clive. Just a quick question, you think. I should part exchange three Rolex, an Explorer 1, 39mm, new model, new papers, an Explorer 2, 40mm, full set, and a Datejust 16233, full set, its new old stock, for a Patek Philippe 6000G. Love the watch. Am I mad? Thanks, Brenda from Ireland. I don't mind if you mention it on the channel. Okay. And at first, I just did a quick superficial uh, review, just thought, give it a few initial thoughts. I, you know, just, I can't tell you what it's like, you know, in the European zone or in the UK, but did some little bit of searching on the Patek, see how much they're selling for used, and I thought, well, doesn't appear to be a bad trade. You know, Brendan's wanting to know, can he pull an AC3? But then... I read the email again, and then I came across part, part exchange. So it occurred to me I'm giving, I've been given a fax scenario that's been slanted 
by the omission of possibly crucial facts. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, you know, mom, dad come home, the oldest runs up and says, hey, Billy and Bobby were playing uh, football in the front room. I tried to, in, in the living room. I tried to stop them, but they insisted, and that's how the, your favorite lamp got broken. You know, the family heirloom. Now, things look pretty good for the oldest until mom and dad, after a little bit of questioning, thickly, quickly figured out that Billy and Bobby were playing football in the front room because the eldest force-fed them peyote an hour before. So, Brendan, level with me, man. How much peyote are we talking about here exactly? So, you know, the Rolex references, you know, date just, explore two, explore one. Okay, well, if we're going to go up from a very superficial standpoint, um, should you exchange three watches that you've fallen out of love with for one watch that you are totally in love with, of course the answer is, oh yeah, of course that's all right. Let's, you know, consolidate and uh, out with the old. Don't just keep it around just to keep it. Don't hoard it. Buy what you love and love what you buy. Now the Patek, I am, I am aware of the Patek 6000G. Now it's white gold, it's 37 millimeters, it's a Calatrava, but it's kind of a funky little cat. It, you know, usually blue dye, I think some may come in black, and it's busy dial. The sub-seconds at four, and then the date, you know, automatic movement, the date is covered by a separate hand with a little red crescent moon on the outer track of the dial. They've got the days, I mean, the days of the month, kind of like an old-fashioned uh, annual calendar. And... The reason why I'm familiar with this is that someone uh, maybe a while back was asking about it because their AD was offering it to them just right off the bat at a discount. So, say what you will about the merits of the watch, I think by Patek Philippe standards, maybe not the most coveted thing out there. I think it basically uh, MSRP of $30,000 it's on Joma's shop for like 20, 28 or something like that. So jump. So now think about this because a Patek Philippe dealer took these watches and sold them off to Joma's shop. Doesn't happen with, I don't think it happens with Patek very much. You know, a dealer is offering it, you know, basically right off the, offering a discount right off the bat. And we know how much dealers and ADs love discounts. Also, literally, Crown and Caliber is selling it pre-owned for literally 40% 40, 40 off. So, uh, also, so Brendan, the questions I, ha I have are, how much, I mean, is it new, is it used? How much of it is the dealer trying to get for full SMRP? How much are you getting for the watches you have? You know, you know the, the day chest, okay, two-tone Jake just fine. New old stocks, a little bit of, maybe not exactly, a little bit better value than the average one that you find. But, you know, the Explorer 1 is a hot commodity, and the Explorer 2 with a full set, you know, now, what I did was basically estimate estimate the value that was tied into the what I was going to fly, what you get with the flyover states for those three, comparing it to like the crown and caliber price. Like I said, the cursory analysis shows, yeah, that's not bad. It's about not a bad deal. Part exchange then. Okay. Also, Brendan, you have to keep in mind that literally. Do as I say, not as I've done. That exchanging watches for another watch is one of the worst ways you can do it, other than high interest credit card debts or possibly a loan from the mafia. You know, because we, we look at we look at our collections, we look at these pieces, we look at our pieces. And we see them as valuable. We see them as, you know, they're, they're things that we love. We put our money, our time, and attention, our hopes, our dreams into them. 
And the AD and the jeweler just sees them as another commodity. We see them as treasures. The AD and the jeweler look at them like your dry cleaner looks at your dry cleaning. You may love that shirt, but they're going to want to get paid and paid well for every article that they touch, every item that comes that they have to put their hands on. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a lot of facts here I'm working with. And Brenda, I'm, I, frankly, I kind of suspect, I do kind of suspect that you might be doing this, that this might be deliberate. If I'm wrong, excuse me. Uh, and also, like I said, Ireland, I mean, you know, 23andMe says that we're like 6% English, Irish English or English Irish, but I have no idea what the, you know, I know in the UK, people are getting screwed. The rest of the world is experiencing what the watch, the rest of the world now here in the US, we're experiencing what it's been like for quite a while in the UK. I know Ireland's not part of the UK, so just, uh, so, and I kind of, like I said, I, can't, I suspect that if I'm wrong, pardon me, but if you're getting that, if you, if, and Brandon, what I'm also suggesting is probably ask a couple of people, you probably, there's probably a forum or something like that. Ask some people in your neck of the woods what they think about it. Because right now, you're probably suffering from watch lust. You know, fall in love, emotional, intuitive. I mean, you're being acting emotionally, you're acting intuitively, and the adrenaline and whatever, and, and the lust is taking over. And the more analytical portions of your brain are probably powering down. Ask someone that you know you're, or that you know and respect what they think about it. So, you know, I'm unsure exactly what the exact details are. But you know, that's not, you know, that's relatively unpopular by Patek Philippe standards. And if you're getting an MSRP or at a discount of MSRP, if you fall out of love with it, it's going to be like a marriage watch. I'm not talking to where it's like they've taken two or three separate watches and put them together. No, I'm talking it will cost you like a divorce. You'll lose half. But, th you know, then again, it's it's your money, it's your decision, it's your choice. You know, I depending on the details, I would think about it long and hard. If you're sure, you know, and I want to say, if you're sure you'll love it forever. Anyway, Brendan, I hope that helps. And uh, I'm going to be starting a very wet Tuesday here in the flyover states, but at least so far I don't have, so far it's an office day, so at least I'm not going to have to traps around downtown to get poured on. Guys, let's enjoy our watches and let's be good to each other. Thanks. You certainly need a lot of caraphernalia in your trade. <laughs> yeah, symbols, chimp, bongo, tambourine. What are these things? Uh, are they? These are clays. Uh, what are they for? Better run them to the Latin American stuff. Yeah, let me show you. Very simple. Very simple. Murder.